You do everything for everyone else, so let me help you make your life easier. Quick, short information to make you empowered so that you feel like the matriarch of your little tribe. So you always feel informed and then you always know your options. Because if you don't know what's on the menu, how are you going to choose what's right for you? So hi, I'm Alina, Director of my Private Practice Supportive Therapy. I'm just an everyday Aussie mum trying not to lose my biscuits at my kids. As the expert, I'm here to share my secrets so no other mother feels alone or powerless. Knowledge is power and I want you to be powerful. To be happy and to feel in control, you need to be mentally strong. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you love this episode. Hello everyone. My name's Elena. Thank you so much for joining me today. So our podcast will be about habitual habits. So understanding and actually reevaluating the habits that we have in our life on day to day, how to be able to shake and mix things up, how to actually feel we're making the most out of the time that we have, and then therefore increasing our well-being and our happiness. Women, especially in terms of the feminine and our biology, we need to be spontaneous and free and joyful and excitement but also want to be able to be quiet and watch movies and listen to music so if we feel like things are stagnant and very routine based especially we when we have kids having this habitual habit and hardcore routine every single day can actually make us feel really quite trapped within ourselves so this is me helping you understanding what habitual habits are and then giving you almost permission to be able to shake things up in a really healthy way and to reevaluate what doesn't serve you anymore and what you actually want to start doing and how you can incorporate it every day either with kids without kids but without guilt okay so understanding the elusive work life balance and the thing is though when i say um work life balance if you are a stay at home mum that is work all the time so how can we actually balance everything out so sometimes especially as a mum with all of our mental load we always seem to focus on all the tasks that need to be done it's a matter of priority of the household and our children with our school it's like a top of the pile mentality so top of the pile means that you know when you go on holidays and then you come home and your letterbox is completely full of mail so then you have to go through the letters and the mail and then you have to reorder it in a pile of most importance so this is sometimes what we feel like we're doing at home this top of the pile mentality So we need to understand how to be able to be happy at home while managing and balancing everything and then creating new habitual routines that can actually help you feel productive but get everything done. So of course we are all creatures of habit and we do function best when things are predictable because it reduces anxiety. You're also able to mentally prepare for what is to come and then when you're able to prepare you feel like you're in control you feel like you're on top of everything so then this can evoke feelings of safety and control within ourselves if we don't feel like we are safe inside or in control of ourselves or our own emotions sometimes that presents as controlling everything around us so a bit of OCD behavior for mums at home where everything's got a spot nothing can be moved that's generally because we don't feel safe inside so we have to control our external world but when your habitual routine is affecting your happiness and mental well-being we need to start to reassess if the habits and routine we have established to keep everything running smoothly and evaluate if they're still relevant and serving our needs and this is especially important as our kids get older and when they become more independent or whatever that looks like, to start evolving and re-evaluating as our kids get older and then trying to be more independent or autonomous in our own ways. 
So the interesting thing about habitual behavior is that it can be really quite automatic and unconscious that have been developed as adaptive coping mechanisms. So even for ourselves, they've been reinforced so much, now they're automatic and now they're unconscious. So these routines that can be hard to break because they have been inflexible and immediate. So you think of your morning routine with the kids, what it looks like, and then at the end of the day, that routine to get everything done, whatever that looks like for each family. But especially for the kids, having that routine can sometimes feel really rigid and controlled and really quite overwhelming and boring, to be honest. So this behavior can be programmed like a computer within your brain. So you, you can be so task focused that any deviation from the goal can actually provoke anxiety. It can also pro evoke fears of failure and then it can also challenge my own internal sense of control. So understanding a thing's really quite rigid, black and white, and then if we feel like everything is so task focused, where's the time for spontaneity or enjoyment or fun or relaxation or connecting? So this habitual behavior can impact on our mental health and happiness. So we're actually focusing on the task to complete in an automatic fashion rather than actually having the freedom to choose what we want to do with our own time. And obviously there is this fine line between as a mum doing what you want, especially if you're the one that's the primary caregiver or you're the one that's at home the majority of the time. And especially for mums, we kind of juggle and balance everything. So understanding what things can be changed, what habits have I created, are they serving me anymore? And if I don't have habits, maybe could I structure some kind of fun ones in, okay? So we also need to understand about happiness, how all of this impacts our happiness. So positive psychology has a theory and it states that happiness is a fallacy. It's a lie, especially in terms of your brain. So rather achieving happiness, it's a conscious effort of balancing your five pillars. They call it five pillars. So essentially because happiness is an illusion, if you're able to convince your brain or to do these five pillars, to do these five things, it almost then tricks your brain into believing that you're happy and it gives you that sense of control and then increases your well-being. So let me tell you about the five pillars. I don't like the name pillars, but it doesn't matter, okay? So number one is positive emotions. So learning to appreciate and be grateful for the life you have on a daily basis. And if you don't have any positive emotions or any gratitude for the life you have as a mum with your kids on a daily basis, come and speak to someone. That's what we definitely need to resolve, okay? Number two, engagement. Participating in activities that show your strengths so that you will then become confident and productive. You actually feel worthwhile that you can do the right thing and you're actually a special member of society or a community in some way. Number three is relationships. So making an effort in all your relationships and not taking people for granted. So especially sometimes with mums, with kids, with work, we feel like we're a little bit burnt out or we don't have time or we don't have anything else to give. So our relationships and our friends, we sometimes don't prioritize or make as much effort that when we used to, especially before kids. So relationships and our friendships especially as women because women are a lot more social than men we need to prioritize our relationships so that we have people to speak to so number four is meaning finding something in your life that is important and giving you purpose and I've had a lot of different mums that have come in and they've said well I've done the right thing I've had my kids I'm so grateful that I've had them but I feel like this isn't what I expected motherhood isn't what it wasn't in the brochure this isn't how 
I thought that it would be your motherhood and now they feel almost like a loss of purpose. They don't know what they want to do anymore. They don't know what career they want. It can be extremely overwhelming and humans need some form of purpose. So whatever that looks like for you and whatever gives you that sense of drive or joy in whatever shape or form that actually looks like because we're all different and we're all individual. So number five is accomplishments. So set achievable goals and then celebrate your success when you complete them. Do you know like what a goal that I love for me? Waking up. (laughs) I feel so successful when I wake up and I get out of bed in the morning. I feel so successful when I'm actually out of the house with all the boys and there's been no tantrums. I feel so successful when I actually can make it home at the end of the day with all of them and I haven't forgotten one. I've got three little boys. So even though this can sound a bit hardcore about your accomplishments, achievable goals that are right for you that you're proud of yourself that you do. Do you know, I'm actually really proud that I set a goal that I was going to make uh, meal prep so that everything's done and I've done it and then congratulate yourself on it because we need to start rewarding and being proud of ourselves in a really healthy, authentic way so that we have internal validation for what we are doing ourselves and not always depending on other people telling us how wonderful we are which i hope people are telling you because mama are you are wonderful especially if you're listening to this because this means that you're trying to better everything okay let me say them again positive psychology states that happiness is an illusion it's a fallacy but if you can balance these five things in your life it will give your brain the illusion of happiness So one, positive emotions. Two, engagement and participating in activities that show your strengths. Three, happy, positive relationships around you. Number four, finding meaning that gives you purpose. And number five, accomplishments, goals, and then giving yourself a pat on the back. If you can do these five things, one, it can help us realize what we want, what makes us happy, how to be a well-rounded human. We might not just want to identify as a mother, we want to identify as who we are and what what is it that I like, what is my purpose. I don't want to give up on my friends, I want to be able to, how I can incorporate them the best way that I can. It might just be sending copious amounts of reels to someone just to say that you love them. So then if you are listening to this and then you realize that you can have feelings of being really overwhelmed, you don't know what your purpose is, I don't have any positive emotions, I don't feel like I ever accomplish anything because I always feel like I'm always behind the eight ball. If you feel constantly fatigued and stressed, like the to-do list just never ends and for a mum, it never ends, okay? but how you feel that you're not and sometimes that awful feeling in the pit of your stomach that you're not able to get on top of everything okay even just the jobs around your house that even perhaps when the kids were little you loved and now that you hated right I used to love grocery shopping now I despise it so it's time to investigate your habitual routine and then focus on your well-being goals So those five things of happiness and how you can actually then incorporate them in your everyday life to increase your self-worth, your well-being and your internal validation. So number one, be very aware of where your time is actually going. So I always have this saying that I never judge any of my clients when they come in with me because I'm the seagull and my clients are like chips on the beach. So if I can kind of view everyone from the seagull perspective and their chips, then I don't have any judgment for anyone because I can see the bigger picture of what's actually happening and what's been impacting them that's kind of making them feel this way. So if you want to be aware of where your time is going, look at your life for this week or for the next couple of days like a seagull. 
So understanding your routines as they stand now and then think about if you should keep the routines exactly the same or would it be beneficial to shake things up? Would it actually put a little smile on your face? So have you developed any maladaptive coping mechanisms? So maladaptive coping me- so we all have coping mechanisms. So maladaptive means that they might have been good coping mechanisms in the beginning but now it's actually turned into something out of control that I don't like and really negative coping mechanisms. So for an example, when you're stressed out and you started with just one beer in the afternoon or just one cupcake after dinner, these were little rewards or little coping mechanisms that you made it through the day. Now they've turned into maladaptive coping mechanisms. It's turned into, this is me over exaggerating, it's turned into like a carton at the end of the day or eating a whole cake at night. So that could be the same as at the end of the day, I just have a glass of wine, you know, to wind down and relax. That's a little coping mechanism. But then when it turns into a maladaptive coping mechanism, it means it's a bottle of wine or two bottles of wine every day. And the thing is though, when it starts to clock over until five o'clock, it's wine time. And even if I don't want to have a drink, but there's something within me that I don't know if I can cope without it, I just have to do it even if I don't want to. So that's huge, which needs to be reassessed as well. So that's also um, evidence of a bit of a dysregulated nervous system where you're kind of numbing yourself out of different things. So... Um, Have you been focusing on getting the kids home after school, cleaning and cooking for dinner? Perhaps then letting go of those hardcore structured habitual routines. And so one day a week, instead of going straight home to do it all, maybe play with the kids in the backyard and put in a frozen meal. Or have toast. Scrambled eggs on toast. Who cares? It doesn't matter. So doing something that's a bit different or spontaneous in the afternoons or even in the mornings. In the mornings, maybe waking up 10 minutes earlier, putting on YouTube and then YouTubing mum, kids, yoga, and then see what happens. And then you can all do that for five minutes. That's all you need to do. And then you can move on. So also think about your friendships. If you feel like your friendships are all one-sided, maybe think about distancing yourself from people that don't make you feel good about yourself. If people aren't making you feel good about yourself, why are you friends with them? If you feel like the majority of your spare time is feeling isolated and you haven't been in a social group or a social setting for longer than you can remember, get involved in community events. So this can either be with school or um, volunteering there's this site called um, Ethical Jobs and they've got a volunteer section. So even doing it with the kids so at least you feel like you're a part of something and you're doing something worthwhile, which gives you that kind of meaning and purpose. So we are all social beings. We all need some kind of camaraderie together, especially for women. So remember when you were younger and used to love that hobby or activity, but you no longer do it anymore because life has got in the way or actually the kids' priorities are in the way. This is me giving you permission to get it back. Remember those times you used to rollerblade? Go again. Do something fun. Do something spontaneous. Involve the kids or ask hubby just to have them for 10 minutes. Habitual routine doesn't just affect your mental health. It can also affect where you spend your money like that morning coffee you buy on the way to work or when you were feeling blue you would go out and buy you something that makes you happy so understanding if these habitual routines serve me anymore because that morning coffee used to be a morning coffee every morning and now it's a morning coffee with a muffin and then you think if it's $18 every single morning for just a coffee and a muffin come on no shame though if It's about understanding what routines I have and do they serve me anymore. And if I feel they still serve me, then fabulous. But if they don't and I want to shake it up, then I want to be able to maybe a morning cup of tea 
or something exciting. If they are becoming problematic, then make a goal of saving that coffee money and then at the end of the year, it could buy you a weekend away or even outsourcing things that to be maintained around the house. So understanding that as well. So this is a constant process of evolving and becoming the best version of ourselves. So this is also about understanding how to set a positive example for our children. So our kids learn by watching. They don't always learn by te- be- being told what to do. <laughs> Do you remember that saying, do as I say, not as I do? Kids are always going to copy what you do and not what you say, okay? So in your life, if all you have is work, 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 right? If that's all you're doing is work, you don't have time for anything else. You're actually burnt out and miserable at the end of the day. You've kind of lost your purpose. You're accidentally snappy and angry at everyone. Then... We need to have a bit of a more connection with our life and our kids and happiness and purpose. So we want to be able to show our kids that life isn't just about rise and grind. We need to have a little bit of fun and spontaneity and enjoy each other, enjoy our family. Practicing gratitude for what we have, understanding how to feel happier in life, and not letting your established habits take over your life if they are no longer relevant. So all of this is just to help me plan a couple of seeds to see what suits you, what doesn't, what options you have, and the things that you can change. Finding your authentic self and then convincing your brain, especially in terms of positive psychology, giving you that illusion of happiness which increases your well-being. So thank you so much for your time. I hope you have a lovely day. Any questions, please let me know. And I look forward to speaking with you again soon. Thank you so much. Bye. If you're hearing this message, you've listened to the entire podcast. And for that, I want to thank you for your support. So you can find me on Instagram or Facebook at supportive therapy underscore MSM podcast. MSM, Mentally Strong Moms. And you can find heaps of free resources online at www.supportivetherapy.com.au. That's my little private practice in Brisbane. So if you find my information useful, can you please leave a review and subscribe? So by you leaving a review, it's a value exchange. It's good karma. I value your support just as much as you value my information. Also, feel free to let me know what topics you'd like to see me covered in future episodes. So get in touch in the comments on Supportive Therapy social media networks. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day, you beautiful mum.